know why, because it's a delicious whole grain and it's super, super, super easy to prepare. So you prepare, Paul, if, if anyone's prepared couscous before, you prepare pretty much the exact same way. Um, so it really doesn't take much time at all. If you can boil a pot of water, then you pretty much conquer <laughs> vulgar. <laughs> Um, so what you do is this is, you can find it in a couple different forms. It's a cracked wheat. Um, this is from a red, uh, sometimes you find it a little darker, it's usually from the red wheat berry. Um, but you can find it, I don't know if you can see it much like this, but you can find it like this as well. And it's, um, it's hard, obviously it's dry, it's not cooked. Um, and what you do is for the ratio to cook it, it's about one cup of the bulgur to about two cups of water. Um, I find it's a little less. So I, I think I put on there one and three quarter cups of water. I think that's a better ratio. Uh, but if you want it a little softer, then just leave it longer and add, add the full two cups. So what you do is put your, your dry uh, bulgur in your bowl, cover it with your boiling water, cover it with plastic wrap, and let it sit for 15 minutes. And that's it. So very similar to cooking couscous. Um, you fluff it up with a spoon or fork and you have this really nice grain that you can use as a substitute for rice, for pasta. Um, if you don't want to use the plastic wrap, can you just put a plate over the yeah, bowl? Yeah, anything that just provides a tight seal. Even if you had a damp uh, dish towel, you can kind of press that on um, and that should work. You just want to keep the steam in pretty much. So that was the hardest part, cook the bulgur. We're going to add it to So like Jeremy said, it's a whole grain. You're going to get lots of great fiber, B vitamins, which help your body turn food into energy and are important for your blood, red blood cells as well. We have some olives here. This is just some chopped calamite olives. These will add great flavor. And as Jeremy was saying with one of the other recipes, they kind of add this salty flavor, mm -hmm. so you don't want to salt the recipe before you actually try it. Try it first. Yeah, you may not need that extra. Radicchio. This is a, uh, one of my favorite lettuces. Uh, it's got a, a little bit of a, a nice bitter taste, uh, full of flavor. Um, you can use this. You can use any sort of green if you want, if you don't like the taste. Uh, but it's really nice to use, and you just kind of cut through the folds and the leaves. And you so get this easy. kind of... A shaving, put that on top. Really nice color too. And Absolutely. And then we're gonna add a little bit of, so we have some of that saltiness, we have some of that bitterness. So we're trying to incorporate a bunch of different flavors here. We're gonna go with the sweetness now. We have some oranges, and this is just the peel removed, and I just sliced it. And you can roughly chop this. We're getting some of that important vitamin C into our recipe, which is, of course, an antioxidant, which can help to strengthen your immune system. And the fiber is intact, too, which is really important. Yeah. So that's going to go in really colorful. Uh, and then mint, just because. You can add any fresh herb. I think mint, um, it just works really well, adds a lot of flavor. It's the definition of freshness, mint flavor. Is That's it, why it's is in it the gum. definition? It is. It's its official tagline. Mint, the definition of freshness. <laughs> if there's a mint board, I want to work yeah. for them. <laughs> so fresh mint, you can add fresh basil. And just parsley would work well. Cilantro. And for a little bit of acid, you can add a little bit of the juice from that orange in there. A little bit of olive oil. That's it. Really nice, really simple. You have the zest here too. Oh, the zest. The zest is coming. Uh -oh. You can add the zest at this point too to even kick up the orange flavor a little bit more. I always get excited about the zest. It's an ingredient that I used to throw away. And it's such a shame. But getting one of your, like Jeremy has this great tool and he has a video on our Elixir Kitchen YouTube page about things you can do with your microplane. <laughs> but basically you can... <laughs> You'll be amazed at what this thing can do. Um, so basically, yeah, just taking the peel off of whatever citrus fruit um, and avoiding that white part because that tends to be bitter. But you get the beautiful essential oils um, that give you that flavor. So just a little bit of zest, you're gonna add so much flavor. 
And for anybody who has mouth sores, the zest is a great ingredient because rather than using the citrus juice, you could put the zest instead in some recipes and it's not gonna be as bothersome, but you still get that wonderful flavor. So the salad's done. You can let that sit ahead of time. You can put that in the fridge. As it sits, the longer it sits, it'll absorb, the bulgur will absorb the dressing and, and, and some of the flavor from the juices and the olives, and it'll just get even tastier. And for the protein here, uh, we're using a nice Arctic char. Um, any fish will work here. Chicken, uh, even if you wanna keep it vegetarian and you have uh, you want to add some, some chickpeas or something like that to that, it would be great. We love to use Arctic char because it's a sustainable seafood mm -hmm. choice. And we recommend there are some apps if you're savvy with your phone that you can download, um, or websites where you can print off a little list. And so there's Ocean Wise. Ocean Wise. Sea Choice is another sea one. Sea Choice. So you can check those out and see what types of fish are sustainable. Um, and I also did a blog post on the Elixir blog about, you know, the best fish choices that are sustainable, also the most nutritious, and also the lowest in chemicals or mercury. So sometimes it's hard to check off all three, but there are a few choices in that blog post if you Google that. So, um, like I said, any fish will work. I'm sh I'm gonna, and you can cook it on the barbecue, on the pan, whatever preferred method you like. No rules here. Uh, but I'm going to show you one way to do it. And this is nice, especially with thinner pieces like this, where you don't want it to dry it out. You want to keep it nice and moist. You want to keep the flavor in. So I have my two fillets, and this was a longer piece, and I just cut it in half. And what I'm going to do is add some flavor onto it. So this is where the zest is coming in. And you can use lemon zest, lime zest. I've already got the orange in here, so I don't need too much. You can put some fresh herbs. You can put some mint if you wanted. This is just some, uh, some savory, I'm just gonna put in there. Just a little bit of salt and a touch of oil. The fish has some nice fat in it as well, so you don't need I too much. I was gonna say, if you're you know, kind of watching the, the oil or the added fats in your diet, with an oilier fish, you don't have to necessarily add the extra olive oil. Well, but of course, if you're looking to gain weight, Go for the heart healthy oils, you know, add additional olive oil, and that's fine. And what we're doing is we're creating almost like a little bundle, almost like a little Arctic char sandwich. You put it's the like other one on top. It. Exactly. Yeah. And then you can use butcher's twine. You can even just set it. I, I did a couple without tying it up and it worked. Um, it kind of looks cooler this way. And if you have <laughs> if you have more inside or if you have a longer piece, uh, it's always a good idea to, to tie it up. And so I just add one piece. You can do a bow. I have a slip knot on here. I'm not good with knots, so. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a specific culinary knot. No. All right. Good to know. As long as you can cut it off after. <laughs> you don't want to get in the situation where you're going to bring scissors to the table. That's it. A uh, really nice piece. And because it's, because it's thinner, um, when you have the two pieces on top, um, it stays much more moist. You're cooking the outside. The skin acts as a really nice barrier, um, and it just gives you a really nice flavorful fish. So that'll go on a baking sheet uh, into the oven. Um, for something like this, I like to keep the oven a little hotter. So I got 400 degrees, and not long at all, about six, seven minutes. Um, you'll find you can take it out, and on the corner, you can flake it off with a little fork. It'll flake apart really, really easy, and you know it's done. And I'll show you. Arctic char is a great choice if you're looking for something other than salmon. I know people, salmon is their go-to. Arctic char, you know, nutritionally quite similar. Excellent source of protein. It's an excellent source of vitamin D, which is quite difficult to get in our diets. And especially in Canada, we don't get a lot of sunshine. Um, so trying to incorporate some, some oily fish into your diet is important. You want a couple of servings per week. Um, and then, of course, the omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. So that's what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that. The skin crisps up uh, really nice, and you have all the juices kind of staying together, and that flavor in the middle, and it doesn't take long, like seven minutes. You can have this grain salad and a nice piece of fish done in 25 minutes. Like I said, I tied this, like, super tight for some reason, so it didn't, didn't run away. Didn't want it escaping. Exactly. <laughs> So let's see. 
Now the skin might come away with it on the bottom, but flip it over. Oh, there we go. Came off nice. And that's it. And you can cut it up ahead of time and serve it, or you can serve it whole, just like that, on top of the rest of the salad. That's it. You know, really, really simple, really colorful, really nice and fresh. And balanced. balanced. Yes, balanced. Very important. So there it is, Wonderful, our roasted meal. Arctic char.